adventurer. Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. I fear I bring you dark tidings. They say that when the wind blows just right through the trees of the Black Forest, you can hear death's song. A haunting melody that heralds the end to all that draws breath. My dear adventurers, listen closely. We can hear it even now. I mean, I never said it was a pretty song. And despite my wretched flute abilities, this thing works and I made it myself. And now I'm gonna show you how to as well. For this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to make a working flute out of PVC pipe. And then because I am who I am, I'm gonna go extra and turn this into the Reaper's pipe. So be sure to get all of your affairs in order and don't forget to like and subscribe while we level up this skill. Now to build our flute, we're gonna be using the Schedule 40 three quarter of an inch PVC pipe. Now, if you're not looking to make this thing anything particularly special, you really only need about two feet worth of pipe. So as I said, this thing's gonna be two feet long, so I ended up measuring and cutting off the section that I wanted. With my piece cut and good to go, I then laid down a ruler just so I can trace a straight line down the center of the pipe. This is just gonna help me line up all of my fingering holes and my embouchure later on. The embouchure, by the way, is where you actually are blowing into. Now, speaking of the holes, it turns out you can't just put them kind of willy-nilly wherever you want. The size of your flute, the actual like diameter of it, the thickness of the walls, there's a whole bunch of different stuff that goes into the actual placement of the holes and how big they need to be. It's actually extraordinarily complex and beyond the purview of this episode. Luckily, the internet exists where we can find apps for pretty much everything. As such, I was able to find this handy dandy little calculator online that will figure everything out for me. Link in the description below, by the way. All I had to do is enter in all of my particulars of the instrument I'm making, and it spits out this list of where to place the holes and what size they should be. Love the internet. Using this, I got to measuring everything out all along my center line and making marks where each one of my holes would land. Now, as I mentioned before, the size of the hole plays an important part as well. Luckily, that handy dandy list that the internet spit out for me tells me what size each hole needs to be. So I went ahead and marked that out on the body of the flute as well, using the first marks I made as my center points and measuring out from either side of it to get my correct measurement. So basically on the holes that were measured out to be like a centimeter in diameter, I just put my ruler on the halfway point and then marked out a centimeter on either side of that point. The vast majority of my six holes here were about one centimeter around, with the second one from the end being slightly larger at 1.2 centimeters, and the third one slightly smaller at 0.8. Finally, the embouchure was one centimeter wide by 0.8 centimeters tall. Real quick though, when you're actually looking for like your drill bits to drill these things out, you wanna shoot for just a little bit smaller. That's because the way to actually tune this and make sure it's the right note is by either growing or shrinking those holes. Making a hole smaller will make a note deeper, but obviously it's really hard to do. Making a hole a little bit wider is gonna actually bring that note up. So again, it's smart to start off a little bit small because you can always make it wider more easily than you can shrink it down. All right, since we're talking about drilling it out, I actually started drilling out the embouchure first. To do this, I just used a 3 8 drill bit and made a hole right in the center. Now we do want this thing more squared off, right? So in order to make that happen, I just busted out this tiny little flat file I had and started working those edges until they matched the square that I had drawn out. So the way a flute works and most of these kind of instruments work is there is a, a chamber and a way to blow air into it. Just like you do with a bottle when you make it make a sound. Basically what's happening is you're changing the air pressure inside of this chamber very quickly, causing a vibration. That vibration causes sound. Same thing. Now in order to make that happen with this little embouchure here, you actually need to, to thin out one edge of it, the edge that you're blowing onto. That's gonna end up being kind of a knife edge there that's gonna split the air. So to make that happen, all I do is tilt my little file up so that I can start narrowing down that piece. Now while researching how to do this, I actually found this video that kind of helped me a lot. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Basically, he pointed out that he didn't have a lot of luck when he narrowed it down from both sides. So like trying from the bottom here and the top to make that knife edge. Instead, he said that he had the most luck when he only narrowed out from the bottom. So kind of putting the file into that hole and using it that way. I don't know why this is, but it's on the internet. I'm gonna trust it. Anyways, this is roughly what you're looking for. See how thin the edge is on the side that I'm gonna be blowing against when compared to the untouched side that is still all thick and chunky? That's what you're looking for. You're looking for like a knife edge that's gonna split your air. 
And during testing it, there was sound. So, you know, victory. Okay, so next I went ahead and started drilling all these little holes. I just tried my best to find drill bits that fit within those marks that I made. No crazy science to it, just, you know, making holes that aren't too big. Okay, so now to actually have this thing play like a flute, you need that resonance chamber to be sealed off at one end. Now, while we're researching this, I found a bunch of different ways people did this, like they would either use a, a dowel that was the right size, some had it much shorter and cut a piece of cork to kind of jam in there. But in that same video that I mentioned earlier, the guy actually had a pretty good design. Basically, he showed that pennies are almost the exact same diameter as the inside of the pipe. All you gotta do is take a stack of around seven or eight of them and apply some electrical tape around the edges until it's a tight seal with the pipe. Just make sure the side that will actually be facing the resonance chamber here has a penny, kind of the hard surface of a penny sticking out. Remember, you want to cause vibration, and if you have the tape kind of folded in on that side, it might dampen your sound. Once it was all taped up and good to go, I just pushed it into my pipe and used a stick to send it about a half inch behind my amateur. And behold, my flute, it makes a sound. Those said sounds are not in tune. Though as I've alluded to before, tuning this thing is actually not that hard. It's just a matter of changing the diameter of those holes. So for example, while playing this into a tuning app I had on my phone, I saw that my G note was in tune, but the A that followed was flat. So I just went to the hole that I covered to make that sound and slowly began widening it with my file. Making the hole larger will bring up the pitch, getting me closer to that note. I just tried this a couple times, making small adjustments as I went, until the note was in tune. And that's basically it. I just repeated those steps until I got the whole thing where I wanted it. And behold, my music. Now, I have zero experience using a flute, and even so, that sound wasn't too bad for my first time ever really trying. I'm just saying, the flute works. I, I don't, I'm terrible. But the flute, it, it's a flute, it does its thing. And if that's where you wanna stop, totally cool. You have a working flute that you made out of PVC pipe for like, what an actual eight foot length of it was five something but because this channel is what this channel is i decided to take this working flute and make it fantasy and while searching around the interwebs for inspiration i saw this badass picture here that has death playing the flute which became my inspiration so with that very little prompting i decided to make this really kind of cool bone design to make this happen, I just ended up using some of this leftover warbler that I had from when I did my mask build here. This stuff is really cool. You just hit it with the heat gun until it's pliable, and then it basically works just like a stiff clay. Doing this, I was able to shape this ball around the end of my pipe and start making it look like the knob joint of a bone. Luckily, I just so happened to have this elk bone lying around to use as a reference. You know, for reasons. Act like you don't have random bones lying around your house, you know. And with that inspiration to draw upon, I just kept heating the piece and working it with the side of my awl until it resembled the actual bone. With that looking pretty convincing, I just stuck it on the end of the flute. I did make sure the, the opening was open so that, you know, sound can come out and all that. Then I just heated up some more of the warbler to help it transition between that bulbous end there and the rest of the pipe. That being said, I was worried that no matter what, you were gonna see that transition, like it would never look like one full piece. So to get around that, I decided to make this kind of little metal ring design that I have here on, on both ends and in the center, just to help with those transitions. Basically just lying down a strip of warbler and then placing two smaller strips on either side to give it a raised ring appearance. Now on this opposite side, I wanted it to look like a broken bone. Like I just kind of cracked this off and it became my flute. That's just how death plays. Holy, <laughs> that suck. To make this happen, I just rolled up a piece right on the end, and then I used a knife to make it look all jagged and cracked. Then followed suit doing the same thing, making my little ring effect on the end. Finally, to tie all that together until there wasn't a big empty space here, I added one to the middle. Again, doing the same thing, lying down a nice flat piece and then adding those rings to the sides. Once the warbler cools, it becomes just like any other plastic like the rest of it is made out of and actually adheres really well to the plastic of the pipe. Now, before painting this thing, I decided to hit it with this filler primer just to get everything nice and smooth. The warbler can have kind of a grainy texture on the surface, so it's nice to hit it with something that fills in those little pock marks and makes it more of a, a unified kind of bone texture. And this already started to make this thing look like a cool and like unified piece. I was 
jazzed. You know, when you see the black pieces on it, it looks different, but when it's all one color, it looks pretty sick. That being said, I was worried that these large pieces here, they wouldn't look like they were part of the bone. They would actually just be too clean looking. So to get around that, I used my Dremel just to add in some cracks and imperfections. Again, just to make it look like it's part of this whole cracked bone that I turned into a flute. Once those were all in place, I just went back over everything with a 600 grit sandpaper to make it all nice and smooth. Next, I added a layer of black gesso just to help give it all extra depth. This way in any of the thinner spots or, or wherever the paint can kind of see through, there's, there's an extra black underneath there to bring some shadow in. With all that set and ready to go, it's time to build it up making it look like a bone. To do that, I first started with a really light layer of white. Again, just letting some of those black streaks show through. Then I used a sponge to lay down some burnt umber in a kind of random pattern. Bones are organic, so they're not gonna be a perfect unified color. And also I wanted to look like it was ripped from a grave, so kind of like a dirty bone. Once I was happy with that pattern, I just went back over it with this off-white cream color to add just another layer of interest. Finally, I used this wash made by Army Painters to really drive home some color and blend everything together. If you don't have this particular wash, no big deal. You can just use like a watered down black or brown, just get it real wet and, and it should cover it just fine. The purpose of this is it's gonna unify all the colors together and also settle down to all the cracks and crevices and give that much more depth. And I think this worked great. It totally looks like just some old bone I pulled out of a crypt to make my flute. Now, for my rings, I just used a simple metallic paint that I got from a set at Michael's. It was cheap, but I'm honestly surprised at what a convincing job this stuff does. Finally, to wrap this thing up, pun intended, I just wrapped these open spaces in the middle of those rings with some of this black thread. I just really kind of like how this winding looks and thought that the black accents will help drive home the fact that this is Jeff's flute. To add just a little, a little something to it, I also decided to hang this bone and feather arrangement on the end here. And check this thing out! You can't tell me that isn't cool looking. It looks like a bone, and even with all the crap I did to it, it still plays. I mean, I still suck, but it plays. With some practice, I'll play, you know, something i'm sure of it there you go i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did you know what to do with the like and subscribe and all that this isn't your first time on youtube i don't think anyways i better get going and practicing i heard the devil plays a mean fiddle and i'm looking to start a band in the meantime though keep leveling up you wait i almost forgot in my Book of Knowing video here, I said that I'd be giving away some scrap leather to somebody who put hashtag leather down in the comments below. I picked at random and the winner is... Family Williams, whom I know actually. Congratulations, you will be sent a bag of scrap leather. I made sure there were some like pretty big pieces in here. Like you're, you're, getting, you're getting a lot of nice, nice leather. That being said, if you did not win, don't feel blue. You see, I've been traveling a lot this week and I've been putting out less content than I normally do. But to make up for it, I'm gonna come back with a bang. So we're gonna do more giveaways coming up soon. So yeah, just be here for future episodes so that you have a chance to win some stuff as well. And because I know this winner's on the Discord, I'm gonna go hit her up there and figure out where I'm sending this thing. Oh yeah, join the Discord too. All right, really going away now. Bye. Need my flute. Okay. You stay to the end screen. I must play you the song of my people. I'm truly sorry. Speaking of my people, special shout out to Scott Pike who joined the ranks of these incredible people here in my Patreon. I couldn't make any of this stuff without them. It is the support of my Patreon members that make this channel run, so... I genuinely appreciate everything you do. If you would like to join their noble ranks, why don't you consider joining my Patreon? Link in the description below. In the meantime, though, you can press one of these videos here. That will work too.